Who wants to have some fun? Because we watched Season 5, Episode 14, The Marine Biologist. So, Katie. Hi. How was the marine biologist? You know, while uh, I was sitting here for 10 minutes waiting for you to do your research, I was thinking about it. And even though I laughed a few times, I don't think I liked this episode. Oh, really? Mainly for Kramer. Hmm. I wrote down, Kramer comes in at 100. Hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Who wants to have some fun? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Throws his golf bag down on the floor, kicks it. So, I I put an up arrow. I wrote, hey, you want these? I don't want them. That was funny. And then immediately, a down arrow for the sand and falling out of the chair Mm. and all the screaming. Mm -hmm. And then just the ridiculous scene with him and Newman in the boot. I'm not sure if it was just in the script or if they actually filmed it, but apparently there was a scene where he had like lost his mind and he was cleaning non-existent sand. Well, maybe maybe better left on the cutting room floor. I guess. How are they going to come back from that? Like once you put into canon <laughs> that, you know, Kramer should be institutionalized. Yeah. So this episode was written by Ron Hodge and Charlie Rubin. Hmm? They have not done any episodes so far in Seinfeld hmm. and will not do any more. Okay. Uh, Tom Sharonis directed. It aired on February 10th, 1994. Vulture.com ranked it as the 61st best episode. And Screen Crush had it slide into the top five at number four. Really? Yeah. So, okay. If you take... If you took Kramer down a couple of notches, it's a good story structure, mm-hmm. and there's lots of funny stuff. I didn't really love the Russian writer, you know, caricature. Mm-hmm. Like he wasn't funny, and he wasn't fun to watch. It was like uncomfortable to watch. You know, this belligerent guy. Yeah, I don't think there was much payoff for no. it either. Did, was he a Russian writer only so that Jerry could make that war what is it good for joke? Like, he could have been any writer. I right? suppose, yeah. I mean, even if it was any writer, they could have still done, like, a Tolstoy joke. And then Elaine repeating it. Could have been, like, a like a really, like, pompous... Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, I like... I guess it was supposed to be funny that he's like, oh, you Americans and your sneakers. But it's not. It was the time of uh, Yakov Spirnov, you know? Who's that? In communist Russia, organizer throw you out the window. Oh, okay. I guess it was like just after the, the fall Cold of the War. Berlin War- Wall. Yeah. Anyway, mm. did you like this episode? I mean, it. it I, I can't uh, separate it from, like, the nostalgia I feel for, sure. like, how funny I thought it was. Um, I think the the dialogue and Jason Alexander – not the dialogue, the monologue uh, that Jason Alexander delivers at the end of the episode mm-hmm. is, like, very strong. And then, like, Kramer's uh, – what is that, a Titleist, a hole-in-one? Like, mm-hmm. that's, a, that's a good, like, yeah. finish. So I guess you couldn't have – like, I think the Kramer and George storyline work really well. Elaine and the Russian guy, uh, you could take it or leave it. And it didn't affect the other uh, storylines at all. It didn't, no. like, interact with them, really. But it did give her and Jerry something to do. I suppose. Otherwise, what would they do? Just Not talk a- about Golden Boy. In my mind, that was more prominent. And I didn't know <laughs> it was in this episode. Who's your, who's your, who's your Golden Boy? Oh. Was it that tuxedo shirt that you had? Or I, no, the purple shirt with the, the purple line. shirt. Yeah, I still have it. Hmm. I don't wear it because it's threadbare and has holes in it. But I can't throw it away. Just throw it into the sink with some light. <laughs> I can't take that away from it. Wash, spin, rinse, spin. Hmm. So let's back up. Uh, who are the guest stars? So we had Carol Kane playing the part of 
Corinne, the woman whom had been hit in the head by the organizer. Lillian! She was Lillian in Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt. She was in Taxi. She was in The Princess Bride. She was in about 80 million animated things because she has a funny sounding voice. Mm -hmm. And she's also in the upcoming season of Star Trek Strange New Worlds. Oh. Which is a new Trek that is worth watching. As opposed to Picard? As opposed to Picard or Discovery. Mm. I just heard people talking about Picard on a different podcast. And they said one had watched season three and one hadn't. Mm. And he's like, don't watch season one and two. They don't matter. Just start watching a season three. You're going to get the payoff you're looking for because everyone from TNG comes back. But that's all it has going for it. Yeah, but that's kind of all you want. I, I mean, guess. no, if you like season one and two were not great, right? So if, if you're going to watch <laughs> what? I don't, I don't think they were good. Great. Talking I, about great. They weren't great. They weren't good. Okay, they weren't good. So why not just dive in and see the gang back together mm. in this kind of like weird, boring story that they're in in Picard season three? I'm not a fan of Jack. Mm. Okay. Anyway, what the hell was I talking about? You want to hear more about uh, Star Trek and our thoughts on those episodes? <laughs> oh, Make yes. sure you listen to <laughs> Carol Kane's and Star Trek. Okay. Our, uh, <laughs> Trek podcast, uh, We Boldly Go, uh, where we dive into each episode of uh, post-Enterprise uh, Trek. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, whenever our kid try wants to race me, mm -hmm. I always say, run, Lillian! And, and she's she like, goes, what? what? And then that gives me a head start. Mm. <laughs> so this episode also guest starred George Murdoch, who played the role of Testikoff. He was in Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. Ooh, Star Trek Connection. Where he played the role of God. Hmm. He was also in The X-Files, and he was in, like, a Baker's Dozen episodes of Days of Our Lives. Hmm. Rosalind Allen played the part of Diane. She looks like a Rosalind. She was in Naked Gun 33 and a Third, Hijack, Sequest 2032. A marine biology show? Mm. She wasn't in any uh, Star Treks, mm. but she was in an episode of Beyond Belief, Fact or Fiction. <laughs> there we go. Which, I mean, it's close enough, isn't it? <laughs> Have you ever used a computer to get on the internet? Have you ever ridden your bicycle and gone over a pothole? I hope people know what we're talking about. It's better if they don't. <laughs> okay, and let's throw it back to last week when I asked you if you remembered this episode. George uh, pretends to be a marine biologist to impress a woman. Mm -hmm. uh, Kramer goes golfing at the beach. I think you did. I think I nailed it. So I'll read the synopsis. Jerry tells George's ex-crush that George is now a marine biologist. Elaine has a run-in with a Russian author. Kramer hits golf balls into the ocean. Yep. I never understood the hitting the golf balls into the ocean. Just seemed like so much needless pollution. <laughs> well, what is the appeal over going to the driving range? You're, you're, you're not getting the balls back either way. Mm. I don't know. The freedom of not having one around you? I guess. I don't know. It seems wrong. You could stick a T into the sand. Sure, yeah, probably. But he doesn't. Hmm. So the opening monologue is about nature shows and how, like, whatever animal is the animal for that week, you're rooting for that animal. I was rooting for you. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think Jerry's thoughts would have been on that uh, guana getting uh, away from the snakes? Oh, my God. Uh, that came out as part of, what was that, blue... Blue, blue world, blue ocean. Blue. I don't know what it was, but everybody knows that clip. Mm -hmm. Oh, so much, uh, so much anticipation. Like it was the best action movie of twenty twenty one or whenever it came out. Seriously, I mean, he'd be rooting for the iguana, but if it was a snake show, mm. be like those poor snakes, nothing to eat. Need to eat. Need to eat the iguana. When I'm editing this episode, I often put on a nature show 
uh, muted with subtitles on my second screen just to have something on to look at. Blue Planet? There's blue, there's Planet Earth. There's a million of them. Mm. I'm watching some like Wolf Island thing now. Mm. I don't know, whatever comes up. Is that the one where they separate the male wolves that are in relationships from the <laughs> lady wolves? And each of them goes and stays with a pack of uh, single wolves of the opposite sex. Yeah. yeah. Test the strength of their bonds. Mm-hmm. I have a problem with nature shows. It can't just be like, look at look at these creatures. There's got to be drama. Mm-hmm. The baby sea otter, she's freezing to death. Mm. What's going to happen? Like, I don't. Don't do this to me, right? I know someone's going to eat someone. That's drama enough. You don't have to like, be like, look at this starving little, I don't know, ostrich well, baby. It's the only way that they can get people to care about animals. Cause like, it's the only way, the only way they don't have anything going for them in the cuteness department Mm-mm. to make you care. No. Well, I mean, like cute plus dying equals caring, <laughs> but there's like, you know what I mean? If you just said like, it's the savanna. The lions got to eat. The zebras are here. You're like, do I want lions or zebras? Well, there are lots of zebras. Lions got to eat. It's the circle of life. But then they inject like false drama on top of that. And I don't mm. like it. I don't want to hear David Attenborough. Why? Why are you watching it then? I'm, it's muted. So I don't know what they're so talking about. you don't hear about, about it. <laughs> but I put on the subtitles. Don't do that. <laughs> He says you can always relate to somebody. You see a dung beetle, you're like, oh, that's my life. So Jerry's lamenting the dethreading of his favorite t-shirt. While Elaine is on the phone. Also, a t-shirt that's a ridiculous shade of yellow. He looks like he plays for the Savannah Bananas. Yeah, he's never worn that color. No. He's never worn gold He's boy. not a yellow. No. No. He's a, he's a navy... Maroon kind of guy. George could be a yellow. George is a, he's wearing his like rainbow plaid shirt in this episode. Mm. George is a yellow. Yeah. Elaine's a red. Jerry's like a dark blue, dark purple. Kramer's an olive green. Mm hmm. Agree? Sure. I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> so, what did you think the payoff of the uh, war? What is it good for? I really didn't think there was going to be any. I thought that was just a silly thing that Jerry said. Mm. So I wrote down, I believe everything you say. Because I trust you. Yeah. So I I need to take advantage of that much more than I do. If you earnestly said, hey, here's a fact. You don't believe everything I say. Maybe because you're taking advantage of it too much. (laughs) I have like told you things. And then once I'm done telling you that, you're like, I thought this was the start of a joke. <laughs> <laughs> because with you, it usually is. Get out of here. This is a weird episode. It is. George comes in doing a Jack Nicholson impersonation. Why? I'm working on my Jack Nicholson. Did A Few Good Men come out that year? Oh, uh, I don't know. I didn't look that up. I guess so. But and like, why? Why? I don't know. Why does he need to work on his Jack Nicholson? I don't know. He, he brings his mail because his mom reads it. That I laughed that mm. Estelle... Like, opens his letters and stuff. Yeah. I was curious. <laughs> I mean, I don't even open your mail without asking you. I don't open your mail without asking you. You got two letters today. One was uh, addressed, addressed to, both, to both of us. But I, I looked at the return address. I'm like, this, uh, this is, this is I'm, I'm, I'm on here as a... They spelled your first name wrong. Oh, did they? Yeah, they wrote Denick. Denick. So it wasn't for you. Um, I, if I'd opened it, I could have been uh, at arrested. risk of being arrested. When they get the um, alumni magazine, I didn't realize or I forgot that Jerry and George went to college together. I thought it was a high school alumni magazine. Because we see flashbacks of them in high school. No. Yeah. But I guess they both went to Queens College? I guess so. I don't know if that ever comes up again. I'm trying to... Are you in, like, have you ever been in the alumni mag? No, why? What, I don't know. what have I done? Is, is that a thing that happens? People write about themselves. They're like, hey, 
this is what I'm doing. Put it in the magazine. Oh. It's, a, it's like a business networking LinkedIn kind of thing. Like, hmm. who, who actually wants that? My alumni association doesn't know where I am. Yours found you. Mine found me. Although I haven't gotten too much stuff from them recently. No. It's just uh, try to sell me cheap car insurance. We already get cheap car insurance through my alum. I guess they, I guess they know where we live because I get their group rate. This is so interesting. <laughs> now I've been thinking about shopping around for car insurance. <laughs> you could save fifteen percent. The electronic organizer. It's such a nineties thing. I was so excited to find the one that my parents had, mm-hmm. replace the batteries, and and see like stuff in it. It's mm-hmm. alive. I still have it. It's so much fun. I know I have a smartphone, but this electronic organizer is so much fun. I remember my dad got one and he was like blown away by how, you know, he was like, this has so, as much memory as a Commodore 64. Yeah. And I knew what a Commodore 64 <laughs> was. I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Um, it's a very 90s thing. You could find out what time it was in... Madagascar at mm-hmm. the push of a button. Not sure what you'd need to. When I changed the batteries and turned it on, it turned on to 1989. Mm. It was like, is this the, is this still the date? Mm-hmm. And you're like, <laughs> no, you've been sleeping. <laughs> I gave it to our kid to play with, and she was not impressed. She played with it a little bit. She likes to pull out. There's like a um, like a program module yeah. card that she likes to take out and put it in. It is really satisfying to like. There's a good like. A to, chunk. Yeah, to to ka chunk the the lock open, and then there's like a like a slide down mm-hmm. to eject the card. It's just like a placeholder card. There's no it's just a piece of plastic. Right. And then to like ka chunk it back in and lock it. It's really satisfying. Mm-hmm. So one thing I did like uh, before George came in was Elaine's so excited that she's going to go pick up Yuri Testikov, mm-hmm. the Russian author at the the airport in the limousine and jerry says do you want to wear golden boy <laughs> <laughs> yeah so then we get the uh who wants to have some fun oh i just i wondered why i wrote i'm just saying i want to have fun <laughs> yeah that was now, do genuine. you want to have fun or are you just saying you want to have fun jerry wants to have fun i'm just saying i want to have fun <laughs> i would be cautious with kramer at you, all don't times. What you're, you don't know yeah. what you're getting yourself into yeah why did everybody say they wanted to be a marine biologist when they grew up in the 90s? Like, what happened in the zeitgeist? It was all the nature shows. You got all the underwater. They found the Titanic. Oh. Uh, David Suzuki? There was, like, submarines with cameras on them. Mm-hmm. It was a very popular job. It was. And not, like, you know, nobody really, nobody's a marine biologist now. I'm, I'm sure, sure there, there are, are some. But, like, nobody's goal is to become one anymore. Mm. I'm sure there's somebody whose goal in life is to become a marine biologist. The kids these days want to be YouTube streamers. That's true. So instead of going to hit golf balls uh, out at Rockaway Beach, um, Jerry and George decide to go to get lunch, and Jerry goes to the cash machine mm-hmm. where he's racing uh, the woman next to him. It's an insane yeah. thing to do. He just has that comedian need to do bits mm. constantly. But he just walked away from that woman. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter. Mm. Like, he wasn't hitting on her. He's like, I'm doing the the race at the ATM bit. I won. Scene. <laughs> 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 yeah. So why does he, I mean, I know it's to serve the plot, but why does he make that up about George? Well, he, he has to think of something, like... He doesn't want to be like, oh yeah, he's a bomb. He lives with his parents. He he could he could massage the truth. He's a TV writer. Mm. Although maybe she's one of those people who's like, she you write sitcoms, well, ew. But also, she said like she saw Jerry in the alumni yeah. mag where it said he had a a, a failed sitcom. a failed sitcom that didn't get picked up. So then she would have known that he was a failed. Well, she sitcom was writer. impressed enough with Jerry being in the magazine. <laughs> but she said she saw him on TV. Oh, yeah. He could have just said, he's in business. He's a businessman. The business plan? Mm-hmm. But he's trying to lower the cholesterol in Wales. You know, all that blubber. 
They're the world's largest mammal, but they don't have to be. <laughs> George goes, it's one thing if I make it up. What are you doing making things up for me? You know I always wanted to be, <laughs> to pretend I was an architect. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Running theme for Seinfeld, Art Vandelay, architect. So she does call him, and we see him on the phone in his parents' house, and he says, Algae, obviously plankton. Mm -hmm. Apparently there was a long scene where he described his uh, life in the Galapagos, living amongst the turtles. Mm, I'm kind of glad they cut it where they did. So do you want to know what else uh, didn't make it into the final cut of this episode? What? The uh, uh, producers at Seinfeld contacted Free Willy and asked to borrow the animatronic whale used in <laughs> Free Willy. Uh -huh. The Free Willy people misunderstood and thought they wanted to use the actual whale and so declined uh, the offer. Oh. And so they CGI'd up a whale and we're going to use a CGI whale at the end and then decided that no it's better to have George just kind of like walk into the sun and have the whale off camera so let's talk about this it's a beached whale uh -huh. the whale's not on the beach if he has to walk into the ocean well it, it could be just like the the tide has gone out and it, there's a few feet of water but mm. not enough to, sus to to suspend the whale I'm I'm thinking this is a, an exploding whale scenario how come we were talking about exploding well in that episode and yeah we didn't bring it up in this episode <laughs> did we watch this episode twice and we forgot about it what happened <laughs> i do want to go back to when jerry is recounting to george that he ran into diane descartes mm -hmm. and she asked about you well, what did she say she said how's george she said george <laughs> uh and then he says you know, at this moment, she is under the impression that you are a marine biologist. A marine biologist. Why am I a marine biologist? <laughs> Such a great line. And I really liked George's, I don't know the exact wording, but when Jerry says she's probably going to call you, he's like, if you are messing with me right now, our friendship is over. Mm -hmm. Like, this is serious. That was a good, that scene felt like very true to the series. Mm. Just good dialogue in the coffee shop. Sure. Why did I write Superman when he saves someone? They don't ask if he's hitting on them. Because when Elaine and Jerry are setting up the sting to get Testikoff to admit that he threw the organizer out the window, they're in the lobby and she, Elaine is like, you kind of like this girl, don't you? Mm, okay. Says, when Superman saves someone, he doesn't ask if he's hitting on her. Okay. You know what? At that point, I was checked out of the Testikoff story. Yeah. So I didn't re I didn't really understand why they were going up there. Well, Elaine didn't recorder. want to have to pay the hospital bills. I know that. But it was her organizer. So she needed to get, get to evidence. Admit. Yeah. 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 I wasn't really invested in that at all. So is Jerry interested in, uh, I'm just going to call her Lillian? Seemingly. Which is interesting because she's not a conventionally beautiful, like she's a very unique looking woman, mm -hmm. right? And as far as people Jerry is interested in on the show, they're models and, you know, like beautiful, beautiful women. Mm -hmm. So I like that he is interested in Lillian, whatever her name was. So you're saying she's not up to uh, Jerry's standards? I'm saying she's probably right where Jerry's standards should be. Oh, but to me, like, I've seen her on Kimmy Schmidt, what, 30 years after Seinfeld? Yeah. And she looks kind of the same. You know, like, she kind of looks like an old woman in the early 90s. Her... This is no shade. I'm just saying, like, she's, she's got an interesting face. The the character's, like, um, actions... I was going to say the character's character. Like, it, she she's not... A, like she's not doing like attractive things like she's sure. smoking in the lobby and the guy's like you know if you can't get that to stop beeping i'm gonna have to ask you to leave she's also not made up to be i wouldn't want to take away the attraction of the whores <laughs> yeah she's not made up to be no a beautiful woman that gets sure. hit with an organizer either she could have been mm -hmm. right but it's like no makeup yeah save the whale george for me why would he need convincing if he's a marine biologist? Just because you're a marine biologist doesn't mean you know how to save a whale. 
Well, if someone asks for a is, doctor on a plane, but you're you're but, a you're a, a urologist, but it's a heart attack, do you not stand up? No, no, no. So somebody. So what? What is a marine <laughs> biologist's job? Marine biologist's job is to like classify and like find animals. Their job isn't to like fly around the country saving beached animals. Nobody's job is that. Well, yeah, but that's what you need in this situation. <laughs> you need a marine. He's gonna he's gonna go up there and, and I don't know. He's gonna you know you need a you probably need like a construction crew <laughs> to dig a trench and uh, yeah. that's really what you need. Like what's fire he gonna he's gonna, he's gonna go up there and with their oh this is a uh, kingdom. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Orcus um, Commonalis. In veterinary school, they do much like fish. And I don't know. Do we they know, do any whale? We we could. Did they mammals? learn anything about whales? We could ask uh, my cousin who's a vet. Yeah. I'm guessing no. Probably not, but it'd be interesting. Like, Does, Do people take their fish to the vet, though? I wonder if they learned anything at all. Or if they're just mm-hmm. like, this is you're never going to need to know this. Mm. I mean... Well, if you, uh, there are like fish farms, you know, maybe, maybe you need to be the kind of vet that monitors the health of a, a fish hatchery or something. Yeah, but there are no whale farms. <laughs> I don't really have anything else other than kind of the ending. So do we talk about how the ending wasn't in the script? No. So that whole monologue wasn't in the script and it was just a scene with like, jerry and kramer and they filmed it a couple of times and it wasn't working and then larry david and jerry seinfeld wrote the monologue and they were like jason how long will this take you to learn he's like i don't know a couple of minutes yeah and uh he like did it and one take yep boom that's it he's a pro so is that the post credit was it after the credits or is there it another? Was, it was the last scene, and it was also the okay. post credit. They like cut it, and because is this the first time there wasn't a closing stand up? I don't think it was the first time it, that there wasn't a closing stand up, but I think it might have been the first time that there was a post credit yeah. like tag. Yeah, as opposed to a post credit stand up. Interesting. So in that post credit scene, George says it was like Rocky one. Mm. I don't get that reference. I haven't seen Rocky. You know we have. Rocky on Blu-ray right there. Oh. I bought it when Blockbuster was going out of business. (laughs) So he and uh, Chicky are face-to-face. There's tears. Mm -hmm. And he decides that that's the moment to tell her that he's not a marine biologist. And she told me to go to hell, and I took the bus home. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really seem upset about it. He didn't have to live the um, lie anymore. And then Jerry breaks the news to Elaine. Golden Boy didn't make it. This is his son. Baby Blue. Well, I don't know. This was a weird one. It was a bit of a weird one. It didn't adhere to the, uh, I, th- I I like when they act like irrationally in normal situations, but I, I liked it. Hmm. I have some corrections from last week. Okie dokie. So I was wondering who's Gore from Gore-Tex. Gore is Wilbur and Genevieve Gore, hmm. who invented Gore-Tex. Uh, in 1985, uh, Wilbur Gore received the, this is a real thing, Prince Philip Award for Polymers in the Service of Mankind. Hmm. <laughs> uh, they also make guitar strings. The Gore-Tex Company? Or yeah. they make guitar strings out of Gore-Tex? No, the Gore-Tex Company. Hmm. They make other stuff like Gore-Tex coated submarine cables. I don't know, like that kind of thing. But like one of their main side businesses is guitar strings. Hmm. So, um, I had to Google, can you taste through your butt? Because of our (laughs) conversation last week. Uh (laughs) So thank you very much. Um, so there's limited sweet and umami, uh, taste, taste, quote unquote, taste buds. There you go. On the testicles. And in the anus. Hmm. It has something to do with fertility. I don't know why you'd need it in your butt, though. I think you're doing it wrong. So, you know, when you're a clump of cells, 
and you've got like a basically a straight line mouth anus and then like you know it the cells differentiate into your your gut and stuff but it's basically you know one line through and through yeah you you've heard the whole thing about how uh humans are a tube yeah okay okay <laughs> and so when you eat food it's still outside of you oh <laughs> Yeah, so when you're a clump of cells, you know, the mouth part mm. and the anus part are pretty close together and like some of the the mouth tasting cells make their way to the bottom by accident. Right. So I guess it does matter what kind of wine you put up your butt. I'm surprised that the only comments we got about the episode were about the marble <laughs> rye. <laughs> so far. So I looked up, I, I did a, a better search for Prell, and it, I found more info about it. It's a real thing. You can still buy it. Uh, it's famously a viscous green liquid in an unbreakable bottle. But here's a fun fact. In the movie The Rock, mm. they used Prell to represent the deadly gas. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I've not seen The Rock, so I don't... <laughs> we have it on Blu-ray. It's right over there. <laughs> Um, and Pert Plus was the first two in one. Yeah, I was right. And you can still buy it, and you can also buy Timothée. Okay. That's your shampoo roundup. Don't use roundup as shampoo. So next week, the episode is called The Pie. I would not have known what this episode was about, except I snuck a peek while you were copying down the description of The Marine Biologist. Mm-hmm. Um, interesting episode. Um... There's been a major change in the uh, law concerning women's rights. Uh, is this is this is that, that this is year this or? <laughs> what are we I might be thinking about the wrong episode. Anyways, uh, Poppy uh, Poppy's a little sloppy. Poppy uh, goes to the bathroom and doesn't wash his hands and makes food. Oh, I think I'm thinking of a, a different episode about the abortion rights. Okay, we'll see. So, that's it. Bye. Hole in one. Peaches, 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 peaches. I love you.